Okay, so how is everyone today? Good? Good. Let's see, this week, next week is Thanksgiving break, right? Yeah. Good, I think, I hope I don't reach too far when I say I think we're all ready for that. Okay. Yes? There's not another one that will be due Friday. Okay. So, we're in section 5.6. Which is called Rational Functions. So can someone remind me of, a ra of what a rational function is? Sorry? A real number? No. <laughs> so a rational function. These are the kind of functions that think clearly. that think clearly, right? They can talk you out of something that's unreasonable. Always plan things out. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not it. Okay. So the definition of a rational function. is any function of the form n of x over d of x where uh, n of x and d of x are polynomials. <coughs> so we've been talking so much about polynomials, finding their zeros, finding their end behavior left and right, uh, factoring them. We talked all about polynomials and now we're going to talk about rational functions which is just okay now we have a fraction where, one, where the numerator is a polynomial and the denominator is a polynomial. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> incidentally, why do you suppose I chose the name N for that one and D for that one? <laughs> yeah, okay, good. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, I'm going to draw a picture of what a rational function might look like. No, in fact, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give some expression examples first and then I'll draw a picture. Okay, so how about f of x is 4x plus 5 divided by x minus 3. So is this a rational function? Yes. So this is a rational function. Terrific. How about um, g of x is, um, say, 5x squared plus 8. So is that a rational function? Um, it's, um, it's divided by 1, which isn't a polynomial. Yes, it is. It is a rational function. <laughs> it, is a, it is a rational function because you could, you could write this as 5x squared plus 8 over 1. And 1 is a polynomial. What's the degree of one when reckoned as a polynomial. Zero. Zero. It's a constant polynomial. So in, this, is, this is in the same sort of sense that, can someone remind me, what is a rational number? Okay. So what's the definition of a rational number? The Q, the set called, that we denote as Q. It's any number that can be expressed as the ratio of two integers. So for example, 5 over 7 is a rational number. There's some numbers that cannot be expressed as the ratio of two integers. Can someone give me an example of a number which is not expressible as the ratio of two integers? Pi is an example. Square root of 2 is an example that we did like on the first or second lecture. 
Okay, so, yeah, I agree. Any anything that's imaginary. Okay, so then, how about is is eight a rational number? Yes, because it can be written as eight over one, or sixteen over two, or any number of other ways. So, so is a polynomial a rational function? Yes, because it could just be written over one. So this is in the same sense that every integer is a rational number. Okay. So how about how about h of x is one over x squared plus seven? Is this rational? It's not a polynomial anymore, but, but one is. Maybe that's what you meant. So this is not a polynomial, but the numerator is a polynomial of degree 0, and the, the denominator is a polynomial of degree 2. So this is the ratio of two polynomials. So yes, this is a rational function. How do you divide a degree 0 over 2 degree 2? I'm not sure I understand your question. How would you Ah, the division algorithm, you mean? Uh, you, there's nothing to do, and I'm not requesting that you do anything. So all, all that I mean is that, you know, could you, could you plug in numbers? Like, could you plug in 10? Sure, right? This would be 1 over 107. So you could plot a whole bunch of values. Yes, this is a function. How about, uh, how about p of x is the square root of x? Is this a rational function? It is not now. It is not. Because remember, remember, square root of x can be written as what fractional exponent? x to half. And to be a polynomial, we have powers of x, but what must be true about these powers of x? They have to be whole numbers. Okay, not, not half. So this is not, not a rational function. So there's lots of functions that are rational functions, but not every conceivable thing is a rational function. Okay, so now let's draw a picture. I'm going to try and draw all the salient bits. Okay. So I'm going to make some interesting things happen to this function. So I'm going to make something interesting happen here. Uh, I'm going to make something interesting happen here. And that's enough. Oh, I need one more. So I drew three dashed lines. Two vertical, one horizontal. So this is not part of the function. This just helps you understand what it is that I'm drawing. OK. <clears throat> in this just a little bit further. <coughs> and then how about something like
Okay. So now these these various features have names. <coughs> so this particular feature, this feature where the function from the left side goes starts to become quite vertical and from the right side quite vertical. This feature here is called a vertical asymptote. anyone care to guess what this <laughs> yeah this one's gonna be called a horizontal asymptote so this this vertical asymptote the way you say it is you say this is a vertical asymptote of X is negative 4 What will this one be? A horizontal asymptote of y is 2. OK. And then what's this called? A hole. There's no real standard notation for this, so I'll just say at the point 1, negative 2. So given, given a rational function, a rational function can exhibit any of these three uh, features. It can have as many vertical asymptotes as you desire. So you could say, well, could you give me a rational function that has 47 vertical asymptotes? Yeah, sure, no problem. Could you give me a ra or, or, or zero vertical asymptotes for that matter? Can you give me a rational function that has 34 holes? Sure, no problem. Okay, but you can have at most one horizontal asymptote. That is the, that is the maximum possible. Okay? So for this one, <coughs> You can have 0, 1, 2 of these. For this kind, you can have 0, 1, 2 of these. But for horizontal asymptotes, you can have 0 or 1, and that's it. And our, our job in this section <coughs> is to um, <coughs> look at the expression of a function, to take the expression of a function, and be able to cut, find all such asymptotes and holes, and then construct a sketch of the resulting function. So does everyone understand the work that is set before us? Okay. <clears throat> so we'll start with the easy work. Start with horizontal asymptotes. So this is the easy work in a sense because it for two reasons. In the first place, how many horizontal asymptotes can a rational function have? Zero or one. Zero or one. And then, uh, so it can only have 0 or 1. So we don't have to worry about there being lots of them. There's either, there either is 1 or there isn't. And then the formula to compute it is straightforward also. So <coughs> let n of x over d of x be a rational function. And uh, 
such that uh, the leading coefficient of n of x is a and the leading coefficient of d of x is b. Okay, then what we're going to do is make a little uh, classification on the respective degrees of the numerator and the denominator. So the numerator has a degree and the denominator has a degree. If the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator, if that's the case, then there is a horizontal asymptote of y is equal to 0. If the degree of the denominator is equal to the degree of the numerator, then there is a horizontal asymptote of y is a over b. <coughs> that is to say, the leading coefficient of the numerator divided by the leading coefficient of the denominator. What's the last possibility concerning the degrees? Well, that will be the last possibility for that. But So we have degree on the bottom is greater. Right. So now the degree of the denominator <coughs> is less than the degree of the numerator. So these are all the possibilities, right, concerning the numerator and denominator. Either the denominator has bigger degree, the same degree, or less degree than the numerator. In such a, in such a case where the degree in the denominator is less than the degree in the numerator, there is no horizontal asymptote. Okay, so let's have some examples. <coughs> How about f of x is 4x plus 5 divided by 3x minus uh, 7. So what case are we in? Second case. <coughs> when the degrees are the same. What's the degree of the numerator? What's the degree of the numerator? No. <laughs> One. <laughs> What's the degree of the denominator? One. Also one. Right? Degree one polynomial divided by degree one polynomial. So we're in the case when the degrees are the same. In that case, in that case, uh, so the degrees are the same. So there is a horizontal asymptote of what? Four over three. Four over three. So what this is saying is that if you were to plot this, we don't know what's happening in the middle. There's some kind of strange wiggle happening in the middle. So, so the stuff that's happening in here is a mystery. <coughs> but eventually, eventually, the function will become attracted to four thirds. So what's happening in there is obscured from, from view. We don't know. OK. Uh, 
How about g of x is 4x minus x squared divided by uh, 7x plus 5. Really? I thought it was four sevenths. Look. <laughs> Which case are we in? We're in the third case, right? Because what's the degree of the denominator? One. And what's the degree of the numerator? Two. Okay, so the degree in the, in the numerator is bigger. So we're in the case where the degree of the denominator is less than the degree of the numerator. And that's the case when there is no horizontal asymptote. What that means, what that means is that um, no matter what you draw, no matter what you draw, if you draw a horizontal line, eventually that function will not be attracted to that horizontal line. It's going to move away from it arbitrarily far. Okay. And h of x is, say, um, 5x minus 4x squared divided by 3x squared plus 8x cubed. Right. So we're in the case. So what's the degree of the denominator? Three. Right. And the degree of the numerator? Two. Two. So we're in the case where the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator. And in such a case, the horizontal asymptote is zero. So what that means is that if you were to draw this, it's a mystery what's happening close to the origin. That's all obscured from view. We don't know what's happening in there. But eventually, eventually, it'll become attracted to y is 0. OK, so now, some of you may have seen more or less something like this before. And uh, essentially, every college algebra instructor has to say this. So you can look this up on, on Google. So this, these three cases, you could type the following into Google. Uh, so B, O, B, zero. Pronounced Bobo. Which means bigger on bottom, you get zero. Bobo. OK, this one, this one. B-O-T-N. So this is pronounced botan. So what do you think that stands for? Yeah. Bigger on top, no horizontal asymptote. So bobo botan. And then what's the last one? You know what? I didn't come up with this. I never heard this until I taught college algebra. And people are talking about Bobo Botton, and I have no idea what they're <laughs> referring to. I had to look it up. So in this case, each DC, this means, this means exponents are the same, then you divide the leading coefficients. I didn't make this up. But I'm, the, the reason why I'm writing this down is because like a third of everyone that comes into this class knows this already. So I want, to I want you to know that, yes, you already knew this. M maybe. Right? <laughs>
Okay. So you could literally type Bobo Button right now into Google and it, you'd get tens of millions of hits. Okay. Uh, now, there's a, there's a purely mechanical way to answer this question. So let's do it. So you can do the following. You write the terms in descending order of degree. That is to say, you write the biggest ones first. And two, you include the zero terms. And then three, the ratio of the leading coefficients, <coughs> if it exists. is the horizontal asymptote. So let me explain to you what I mean. So for example, if I was to give you P of X is 3X plus 8 divide by uh, 4X plus 5X squared, uh, like so, then what case are we in? We're in the case where the degree in the denominator is bigger than the numerator. If you like, we're on the, the Bobo case, right? bigger on bottom. Okay. But what I'm going to do is instead of, instead of that, I'm going to just do this mechanical transformation here. So I'm going to write the denominator in descending order of degree including all the zero terms. So 5x squared plus 4x plus 0. Now I'm going to write the numerator also in descending order of degree. And I'm going to make the terms all line up. And I'm going to include any missing zero terms. So the numerator is 0x squared plus 3x plus 8. So there were zero of them. So I wrote 0. And now look. Is this a ratio? It is. 0 over 5. And what is 0 over 5 equal to? 0. So there is a horizontal asymptote of y is 0 over 5, which is to say 0. OK. What about q of x is <coughs> x cubed plus 1 divided by x squared plus 8. So what case are we in now? Bigger on top. Bottom, Bottom right? But. I'll just rewrite it in this way. This would be 1 x cubed plus 0 x squared plus 0 x plus 1 divide by, now how many x cubes in the denominator? 0. zero so 0 x cubed plus 1 x squared plus 0 x plus 8. And now let's consider this ratio, or this, this thing. So is it a ratio, 1 over 0? It's not. That's not defined, 1 over 0. So there's no horizontal asymptote. How about uh, x? squared minus 5x cubed over 7x cubed plus 4. So now what case are we in? DC. 
right? We're in the Eats DC case or whatever. This is when the degrees are the same. So if you just rewrite these, that'd be negative 5x cubed plus 1x squared plus 0x plus 0 divide by 7x cubed plus 0x squared plus 0x plus 4. And then consider this ratio, or this expression. So is that a ratio? It is. So what is the horizontal asymptote? Negative 5 over 7. So given any rational function, you can just sort of rewrite it in this standard way, and then it's always the ratio of the leading coefficients, if that ratio exists. In this case, the ratio does not exist, so there's no horizontal asymptote. OK. So as a matter of uh, language, I could ask the following. So suppose I give you f of x is 4x plus 5 divided by 2 minus 8x. I could, I could ask you, I could say, as x goes to negative infinity, blank, and as x goes to positive infinity, blank. So what is it that I'm asking? The end behavior. Well, understand that the end behavior of a rational function, when that rational function has a horizontal asymptote, is exactly that asymptote. So does this, does this rational function have a horizontal asymptote? Yeah. It does. Yeah. It does. So what is its horizontal asymptote? <coughs> Four over what? Eight. Almost. Mm -hmm. Four over negative eight. Oh, yeah. Right. So this has a horizontal asymptote. So I we could rewrite this as say four x plus five divide by negative eight x plus two. So this has a horizontal asymptote of y is uh, negative 4 over 8, which is to say negative half. So what that means, if we were to have a drawing of it, then down here at negative half, What we know from this information is that we're not sure, we don't really know what's happening in here. This is still a mystery of what's happening in there. <clears throat> but outside of there, away from what it might be doing near the origin, we know that it has to be attracted to negative half. So it's going to do <coughs> something like this. So what does this function do as x goes to the left? What does y go to? Negative half. And as you go to the right, what does the y value go to? Also negative 1 half. OK. So any question about this? OK. So now another bit of notation that we need. So the notation x goes to a and then superscript negative. So that's a superscript and that's a minus sign. This means x goes to a from the left.
So what do you suppose is the next one I'm going to write? Right, correct. So x goes to a, and I want to I want to indicate from the right. So the way that I'll indicate it is with superscript plus sign. So this means x goes to a from the right. Okay, so that being the case now, I can draw a picture. Is there going to be enough for two pictures? No, I won't try and force it. Okay, so I dashed two verticals and one horizontal. So this is not part of the function. I haven't drawn the function yet. I'm going to draw one, but these are going to help, help us draw it. Okay. <coughs> so, um, let's see. I'll put it right here. No, two, I'll put it right here. So I put an open circle right there. And I'll do it like this. Okay, so this is a plot of, say, f of x. Now I can ask lots of questions about behavior. So, um, so question, question one. As x goes to the left, blank. As x goes to the right, blank. So how about it? Correct. Well, it's not y equal. It's not equal, but it goes to it, right? So that is to say, as you go to the left, that means that you, know, you can ignore what's happening close to the origin. Just start going way far to the left. And where does the y value go? Well, it goes to this horizontal asymptote. And what is that horizontal asymptote? Negative 1. So y goes to negative 1. How about as you go to the right? Similar story. OK. It, it does, but this means eventually. So that so x going to the right means that you can sort of ignore anything that's up to here. <coughs> so you can say, well, I'm not going to consider it until I get to x is a million or a billion 
or whatever your favorite big number is. So you can think of this as eventually. Okay. Question two. As x goes to 3 from the left, blank, and as x goes to 3 from the right, blank. Right, correct. So let's consider. Going to 3, well, where is 3? That's this, right? That's this one. So as we go to this position, this horizontal position, and we're going to go to it from the left, which means that get on the left side of this line and start tracing the function. Well, where does it go when you do that? to negative infinity. The closer, uh, when you're on the plot, the closer you get to, to x is 3 on the left side, the closer you get to negative infinity. Okay. Okay, how about as you go to 3, but now we're going to go from the right. Positive infinity now. Because what we're going to do is we're going to get on the we're going to get on the red, and we're going to go to three, but we have to go from the right. So get on a, get on a piece of the function that's to the right of three. So here's a piece of the function that's to the right of three, and we're supposed to go to three. So start traveling toward three, and do you observe that you're going to positive infinity, all the way up. Okay, so question three now. Uh, so, and three questions. What is f evaluated at negative two? And as x goes to negative two from the left, blank, and as x goes to negative 2 from the right blank. So how about it? f evaluated at negative 2. It's undefined. Right? How can you see that it is not defined? There's a hole, right? There's no, there's no value for x is negative 2. So this is <coughs> undefined. Well, at negative 2. It's defined almost everywhere else, right? It's defined right there, for example. But it's the dot, is the dot on the whole line? Because there's just one dot at x equals Right. There's no, other, there's no other dot. Right. But if there's one dot, the whole line is on the Or is, it, is there a dot to symbolize the line? So the, quest, the question is, is that if we were to plug in, say, x is 1. Oh, is it because there's no y value? Yes, because there's no y value. So if we were to plug in x is 1, so that, that's 1 right there. Mm -hmm. So is there a y value? Yes, right there. And over here, there's a y value right there. And over here... There's a y value right there. But when we try to plug in negative 2, there's no, there's no y value. It's, in a sense, passes right through it without touching. So there's no y value. So f of negative 2 is undefined. Now, how about, how about as x goes to negative 2 from the left? It's 3. Y is going to 3. Where the hole is at. 
So this means that we're going to go to negative 2, so this is negative 2, and we're going to go from the left, and what y value are we approaching as we go to the left, go from the left? 3. How about as you go to negative 2 from the right? Also 3. So now, in a sense, you might say, well, it's sort of like someone vandalized that point, vandalized this, this, this plot, and then sort of deleted that point. Well, this, this notion is telling you what point was stolen away, right? A, a, an output of y is 3, you might say, was stolen away. And this notion of, well, a function doesn't have a definition, but it still has this this sort of, as x goes to negative 2 from the left, it's 3, and it's also 3 from the right. Functions that have this, you'll study what this means in calculus. And this is called a limit. But that's not, that's not our discussion uh, just yet. Okay, so last thing. For today. So here's two functions f of x is x plus 1, and here's another one, g of x is x plus 1 multiplied by x minus 2 divided by x minus 2. So my first question is, are these the same function? No, they're not. Why are they not? Neither one of them has an asymptote. The reason why they're not the same is even simpler. G of x has more degrees. It's not that either. It's quite simple. That's it, right there, that one. They have different domains. So the answer is no, because they have different domains. In particular, where can G, what is not in G's domain? Two. Okay, so I know that we're coming up on the end, but I have to draw this. <laughs> so if you were to plot f, then how does f look? Very good. So this is what f looks like. And if you were to plot g, it would be just the same except at 2, there'd be a hole. So we're going to see more effects of this on, uh, on Wednesday. Have a nice Monday.